It was a foggy, dark, and cold morning on January 17th. Elizabeth Hardig was unknowingly driving behind her neighbor, Cindy Renner, when Cindy was hit head-on by another driver. Elizabeth saw taillights in front of her. And all of a sudden there weren't taillights anymore, there were headlights. A nurse at Bryan West, Elizabeth's immediate reaction was to help. The driver was bent over and not breathing well. I got her airway up and cleared and secured and there was a lot of blood so I really didn't even know it was Cindy then. I looked at her hair and I thought, wow, this looks like Cindy's hair. Elizabeth held Cindy's neck and head until paramedics arrived. When Cindy's family got to the hospital, an officer told them about the nurse who saved Cindy's life. He says, I think that nurse lives close to you. And I said, um, yeah, it's, it'd be Elizabeth. And he flipped through his, his notes and, and it was. They didn't know if Cindy would survive the crash for 10 days until she started showing improvement. And a whole bunch of little things that used to not mean anything, all of a sudden they're pretty important. If it wasn't for Elizabeth, we, um, we would not be sitting here today celebrating like we are the little things. I didn't really think of myself as a hero up until that point. I thought, well, I guess maybe I am. It all goes back to that morning and what Elizabeth did to save her life and give us our mom. Reporting in Lincoln, Brittany Paris, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. It was early December, just Justin Hilger's second day on the job as the general manager of Big Red Kino Restaurant and Sports Bar. Shortly after opening, a customer sitting at this table began having chest pains. We were kind of just keeping an eye on him and he was sitting in his chair and he slouched over and passed out. It was a mere 24 hours since Hilger had gone through his required Red Cross CPR training. Another employee called 911 and he immediately sprang into action the emergency defibrillator just a few feet away. We got him on the floor. Um, I started performing CPR on him. After a few minutes of that, we got out our AED, um, hooked him up to that, and that continued to tell us to keep um, continuing CPR. Moments later, paramedics arrived and took the man to the hospital. Hilger says without the training, he wouldn't have known what to do. You never know what it, you know, every day is different. You don't know what going to run into or what the day is going to bring. So, I mean, being very well trained in all aspects is a good idea. Unfortunately, the customer died a few days later, but Hilger is being awarded the Tribute to Heroes Emergency Medical Assistance Award for his rapid response. This is Officer Matthew Shufflebein of the Lincoln Police Department, and this is former Marine Officer Jared Hermes, they've both been on the force for a little more than two years. Working together for a majority of that time, and last October, their training was put to the test. We heard over the radio that a, uh, uh, the, there was a medical call that had come out and they were in need of an AED possibly. Four minutes later, they were on the scene where an elderly woman had fallen. We found uh, the female laying on the floor in the kitchen. Uh, I checked vitals, didn't have a pulse or didn't detect any breathing. That's when Officer Hermes began CPR, while Officer Shufflebein prepared the AED. Then Lincoln Fire and Rescue arrived. I was still doing compressions while they were getting their equipment hooked up. The two say that working together gave them a mental advantage before jumping into action. Pad, pad on one sentence. You can kind of talk back and forth the situation before you get there, kind of what you're going to do. And once you've been together for a while, at that point we've been together 10 months, so you kind of know how each other's going to react on a scene, what steps you're going to take, what each other's going to do. I'd, I'd equate it to, you know, being like brothers. Now working separately, neither one of them consider themselves a hero. Rather, they were simply doing the job that they signed up for. Reporting in Lincoln, Cole Miller, Channel 8, Eyewitness News. It's kind of strange how fate deals its hand. Mitch Dicely found that out firsthand as he stepped outside last fall to work in the yard. I heard somebody behind me uh, around the corner going, help, help. Does anybody know CPR? Screaming. That's when he ran to his neighbor's house. And he hands me his... Uh, his boy, and I 
was kind of shocked at first. The 10 month old boy had stopped breathing. Dicely could hear a heartbeat. I gave him two more breaths and uh, the, the first breath, he kind of opened his eyes a little bit. And on that next breath, he kind of started breathing in again. Emergency crews then took over from there. Dicely says his lazy Sunday sitting on the couch watching football took a complete 180. But had he not gone outside, he says things could have ended up much worse. He says he still keeps up on the family and their little boy to this day. They said he's doing fine, and I seen him. He was running around the yard and everything, or the, the, uh, the uh, living room and stuff, so... It was a, it was a, it was an experience that I'll never forget. I'll say that. Reporting in Lincoln, Cole Miller, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Some people spend their whole lives not knowing exactly what their calling is. Others, like Ron Wolf, a 34-year veteran of Lincoln Fire and Rescue, always knew what they were supposed to do. Once you become a firefighter, that is, that's something that you really take a lot of pride in. I was always proud to take that somebody would ask me, what do you do for a living? I said, I'm a Lincoln firefighter. In the late 90s, Wolf joined the urban search and rescue team. And in a short time, his skills would be put to the test. On the morning of September 11, 2001, New York City and the rest of the country watched as the World Trade Centers were attacked. And thousands of lives were lost. Two weeks later, Wolf and Nebraska Task Force One were on the scene. I think what I seen was almost like a movie set. And it was overwhelming in size. I, I just... Uh, was shocked when, when you actually are there and you think I'm part of history. The images will always stay with Wolf, 